Hi, welcome back. So we'd got to the point where we'd uh, filtered the SQL traffic in Wireshark. We'd exported that traffic. Then we'd tidied up some of these values. We'd tidied up the uh, time value. And we'd also performed a calculation to determine the client IP and the client TCP values by just doing some tests on the source and destination port values. Once we'd got all of that, we were able to sort the data and uh, we were able to sort it by session. So by client IP first, then by client TCP. If you had multiple SQL instances running on one server, you would need to also add in a column that said server TCP and you'd need to add that into your um, sorts to make sure you were able to uh, just pick up the sessions. The way that you would do that, I'm sure you can work that out, it would be very similar to the client TCP uh, formula, we just switch it around a bit. Okay, so we have these values here. Um, I didn't freeze this here, so I'm just going to uh, freeze the panes just so that I keep the uh, title row, the header row in in view all the time. I'm going to add a column here, and then I'm going to add something that says server time. If you've seen previous my previous uh, videos, I'm sure you'll recognise all of this. So we want to look at the time difference between sending a command to the SQL server and receiving a response to that command. So we want the time difference between these two timestamps. But of course we only want to calculate those when it's a, a valid response. So let's widen this column here just to give us some space. Now the, the way that we're going to check for the validity of the response is to use an if statement and I want to check three different things so I'm going to use an and statement to uh, check the three different conditions and the things I'm going to check for are that the previous packet is heading towards the SQL server which means that the destination port number would be 1433. And then I'm going to check that the current packet is coming back from the SQL server. So again, 1433 for the source port this time. And then I'm also going to check that these two are associated with a particular client. So let's just check that the current client, sorry, the previous client equals the current client. Now, if all of those three conditions are true, then I'm going to take that timestamp there and subtract that timestamp to give me the uh, response time. And if it's not true, then I'm just going to put a blank in. So you can see here we've got a two millisecond response time. Now, I'm going to convert this to straight milliseconds because I don't like this format. And the way I do that, I use the uh, Format Painter and I click there and I'll paste that into a spare cell, let's say here. And then in that cell, I'll put a value of one millisecond. I go back to here and I go to my time difference section where I'm calculating the difference between the two timestamps. I divide by this value over here. But because I'm going to copy this down the spreadsheet, I need to anchor that reference. So I anchor that like that. Now I need to convert this back to time. Sorry, I need to convert this back to a number format. So we click number. And I'll put in the thousand separator. OK, and there we have our two milliseconds back again. So now I can copy that cell all the way down the sheet. And that's picking up all of the response times to all of the queries. 
Now I want to resort this data back into uh, frame number sequence um, order, but if I do that right now, because these cells have formulas in them that reference other rows, uh, when I resort the data, it will mess up the formulas. So I overcome that by inserting a new column here. So I'm going to select the whole column. I do Control C to uh, do a copy of the whole column. I move to the new column. I don't do a straight copy, a straight paste. I don't hit enter and I don't do Control V. Instead, I do Alt E S to give me this paste special dialog box. I choose values and I click on OK. And what that does for us is that it converts this formula here the number that's derived from that formula gets pasted as a straight value into this cell here. Don't worry too much about these last few digits. There are rounding issues in Excel. Um, we, uh, we can live with those. They, they don't cause a problem. So I take that and now I can delete this column. And finally, I can sort the data back into frame number order, smallest to largest. So now I have all the response times. Uh, the response times are marked against the first response packet, so I guess that's worth noting. Now what I'm going to do is produce a scatter plot to look at these response times. And the way that I do that is I select all of the cells in the, in the column rather a lot of them, 96,000 rows in this, this spreadsheet. And now what I can do is insert a scatter plot. I'm using Excel 2010. With this version of Excel, we can accommodate 96,000 plot points. In earlier versions, you can only accommodate 32,000 plot points. So in those cases, you may want to sort this data so that you eliminate some of the um, lower values and rows that have uh, a blank in the server time. Luckily, I don't have to worry about that. So let's produce a scatter plot, which um, has appeared up here right at the very top of the uh, sheet. I'm going to move it into a separate chart. Unfortunately, every time I do this, I think the problem is that if you've got blanks in these cells, I think it messes up the way that um, Excel produces the graph. So I usually have to go through this rigmarole of uh, deleting this series. So we do select data, remove that series, then add a series. A bit crazy to have to go around and do this each time. That's, that's the way I do it. So we've got the series name as being the head of the column, and then we want all of these entries right down to there. So I click OK, and now I get something that looks more reasonable. So let's make these a bit bigger so that you can see them. Got a minus value in there somewhere. That's obviously because one of the formulas hasn't worked quite correctly. But we won't worry too much about that. So you can see that uh, most of the time the response times are far less than 20 milliseconds. We have some that are higher. We have uh, some outliers up here. So we can mouse over these. So I could take that one there, for example. And we can see that that's plot point 29879, and the response time was 156 milliseconds. Right, we'll take a break there, and in the next video, we'll explore these plot points a bit further. See you soon.